Hi, in this video we're going to look at question I from the short answer questions from the Oxford Math Submission Test from 2018. And I really like these graphs questions uh, because there are good mathematical ways to approach them and you can also treat them as a bit of a puzzle and this is a good example of one where we can really get away with not uh, applying a full method and deducing uh, the graphs by ruling them out. So I'm going to do it that way first and then also the sort of slightly more mathematical way. Um, now graphs questions really we're going to think about things like axis crossing points, in general uh, behavior for large values of x, uh, general shapes of the curves and you can see uh, here if we look at the axis crossing points uh, it's really very revealing. Okay so for example okay, I've, got, I've got this complicated equation here but if I want to say, okay, where is uh, x equal to zero? Well, if x is equal to zero, all the terms here apart from the final one would have to be zero. So I just get that y to the eight is equal to one. Okay, and that can only be the case when y is equal to plus or minus one. And similarly, if I put y equals zero, okay, uh, then all of these uh, terms apart from the x to the eight are going to be zero. So I just get uh, x to the 16 uh, equals 1 because I'm squaring it of course still. Okay, so again I get x equals plus or minus 1. Right, so now I look at the different graphs. Okay, so this first one only has one y axis crossing point, so it can't be that one. Uh, this one has two x axis crossing points but three y axis ones, so it's not there. This one has two of each, so maybe it's that one. This has two of each, so maybe it's that one. This has two x-axis crossing points and three y-axis crossing points, so it's not this one. And I guess plausibly, in either of these pictures, these could be plus or minus one uh, for the x and the y-axis crossing points, so they've not made it totally easy. But now just think about uh, this graph D. You know, could a point around about here be on this curve, right, that's got quite a large x and y value? Well, if I take x and y both to be bigger than one here, right? All of these terms are gonna be bigger than one. So I've got something, when I square it, I get something larger than one. So it's not gonna be equal to one. So actually really this graph can't have any points in this uh, large x, y uh, region. So uh, it can't be D and uh, then it must be C, okay? So actually we can do this in a fairly uh, straightforward way. Um, now, I think the way we're really meant to go about this question and it's interesting to see mathematically how we can really deduce the full shape of this curve. So, you know, we could sketch the graph actually if we were asked to without just having the multiple choice options here. Um, and the clue really is in the coefficients you can see in front of the terms here. I've got 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And so if we think about uh, Pascal's triangle, uh, that is the fourth row here. Remember counting the top one as the zeroth row. So we get one, four, six, four, one. So I think maybe this is a binomial expansion of something. And uh, really it's then gonna have to be, well, I've got an x to the a to the front. So it's gonna be, so because it's the fourth row, it has to be something to the power of four. So it's gonna be x squared uh, to the power of four would give me the x to the eight term. And to get the y to the four on the other end, I'd have to just have y. Uh, and actually you can check that if you multiply this out, then x squared plus y to the power of four, you do get all of the uh, other terms exactly uh, as are in this expansion. So I'll let you check that, but you know that's how I would work out that this is the one that I'm going to check. So if I've got uh, x squared plus y to the power of 4 equals 1, uh, sorry, uh, so it's all of that squared equals 1, so I've got x squared plus y to the power of 4 squared equals 1. So x squared plus y to the power of 8 equals 1. So taking the square root of both sides, uh, I get that x squared plus y. Well, in fact, I'm going to take the 8th root of both sides. Um, and you know the only numbers that when you raise them to the power of 8 give you 1 are plus or minus 1. So I get x squared plus y is plus or minus 1. So actually, I've got two possible uh, curves here, y is equal to plus 1 uh, minus x squared, and I've got y is equal to 
minus 1 minus x squared and so it must be those two curves that make up the graph that we're looking at so they're both minus x squared so that's why we've got this one here the uh, quadratic the negative quadratics and one of them has one so we've got y equals minus x squared one of them has one added to it and one of them has minus one so shift it up the page by one and down the page by one so again we come to the same conclusion of course we must that the answer is c so two methods there uh first one uh, I think you should always, when you see one of these graph questions, just play around with it a little bit. Uh, usually they come out by considering uh, something like this, you know, axis crossing points, uh, some maybe obvious, uh, any any other easy values perhaps, behavior uh, for very large uh, values of x and y, either positive or negative, things like that, and then, you know, if maybe looking at turning points and things as well depending on the function but if that doesn't work then you might have to do something more mathematical but you can often at least narrow it down to a, uh, two answers if not to a single answer by those kind of elimination methods um, but the maths of doing it properly is also interesting so I hope you found that useful uh, I'll put the rest of the videos into a playlist and let me know if you've got other ways that you uh, did this one um, with these graph ones. There are often a few ways of deducing the answer. And uh, put those in the comments and that'll be interesting. And I will see you in the next one.